Professor Dr. Hussein Al Hawazi uh, and uh, to the Iraqi Dental Society for uh, this uh, council invitation. Uh, and actually, uh, I also extend my thanks to all my Iraq colleagues uh, to see uh, this uh, lecture, and I hope to, uh, it will be beneficial to all of uh, attendees. Uh, let's start. Actually, just I want uh, this is a notification, Professor uh, Hussein, that I cannot remove, that this meeting is being recorded. Please remove it if it is available. Okay, yes, continuous. Okay. Uh, doctor, uh, you agreed for recording. Yani, do you want to yes, 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 I agree. Yes, yes, yes I agree. Ah, Just, okay. There, because, there, yani, there, okay. Yes. Yani, thank you very much, Dr. Montes. He yes, agreed yes. to to uh, record this and place it in the YouTube channel so that more people, more dentists can see this lecture later on. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, uh, let's start uh, tonight with this uh, very hot topic regarding the uh, sealing of the root canal system, which is epical seal from failed to successful anionotics. Uh, there is an important question to be answered, why root canal treatment fails? Actually, we have multiple failures in the endodontic practice, even we are a specialist or professional in endodontics, but actually we have failures, still we have failure. Maybe some sort or a, a little bit than before, but actually we still have failure. So uh, the clinician should know why root canal treatment fails to avoid uh, such uh, discrepancy in uh, managing uh, their uh, patients. Um, regarding the failure of root canal treatment, uh, according to Engel and uh, his colleagues, the majority of endontic failures are caused mainly by incomplete sealing of the root canal system. So incomplete sealing is uh, one of the most common causes of failure of root canal treatment. That's why we are in a challenge, we are in a competition. All the researchers are in a challenge and in a competition to uh, modify or even to create a new materials that are able to create a fluid tight seal of the root canal system. According to the literature, 60% of all endontic failures may be attributed to incomplete or defective sealing of the root canal system. That's why we are here to notify or even to uh, clarify to all of our attendees that we have a very hot topic. We have what's called epical sealing of the root canal system, and we have what's called coronal sealing of the root canal system. And generally, we have what's called sealing of the root canal system. If you don't have sealing of the root canal system, you cannot obtain successful root canal treatment at all. That's why we have to know what are the causes of uh, treatment failure. Actually, beside creating a fluid tight seal or hermetic seal of the root canal system, we have to know what are our challenges. Our challenges actually uh, is uh, very important to know because if you don't know what's the meaning of epical seal, you cannot uh, understand the uh, challenges that you can meet during root canal uh, treatment. Epical seal, it means total obliteration and hermetic seal of the root canal system epically. And the general terminology of the sealing means complete obliteration of the root canal system. So what are our challenges? Is that, or what are the challenges that we uh, can meet during root canal treatment? We have what's called accessory canals. We have what's called fins, anastomosis, epical deltas, and irregularities of the root canal system. All of them are in a one unit to form what's called epical delta system. So the, ch the challenges in epical sealing, we have multiple challenges actually, we will uh, just spot on six of them uh, during this lecture. First is canal anatomy. Second is the instrumentation technique. Third is the irrigation protocol. Fourth is the type of the sealer. Fifth is the obturation technique. And sixth is the post space preparation. Regarding the um, canal anatomy, first we, we, know, we need to know what are the available variations 
in the root canal morphology that may interact or may influence the success of the root canal thickening. First, we have uh, to know what are the variations of the root canal uh, morphology regarding the number of roots. We have what's called the radix intumularis, and nowadays we have uh, uh, an increasing number or increasing percentage of radix intumularis due to the advancement in the uh, diagnostic uh, techniques such as using the Combium CT and in uh, lab or in the research work, we have what's called the micro CT. So uh, now we can uh, obtain more data and we have more information regarding the complexing canal morphology. As we see in this case, uh, I will start today. This is a case with uh, retreatment. Uh, due to uh, failure of the, uh, both of the epical and coronal seed, we have a persistent pain. After uh, many years, the patient did a root canal treatment, but as we see, it is failed root canal treatment. And my, my uh, point of view here also uh, regarding, is it painful or not? Actually, this case was painful, but uh, I, in such cases, even the patient is painless, I usually, uh, do a uh, retreatment of the root canal system because uh, my concept and uh, my thought regarding this, this is a, uh, an empty space and there's a possibility of recruitment uh, in uh, more or less uh, in the future. As we see, this is uh, three roots in, in related to the mandibular first molar in the combium CT, in the axial view of the combium CT. And now after I removed the uh, silver point from inside the uh, distal root of the root canal, but unfortunately, uh, the silver point uh, was not removed uh, completely. There is a fractured epical part of the silver point, and it was a big, big, very big challenge. Why there is a big challenge in this case? Because as we see, there is a chronic epical periodontitis related to the roots. That's why if you are not able to remove or even bypassing or even to solve the problem uh, by non-surgical or surgical uh, intervention, we have uh, a failure. We have a failed root canal treatment as before. That's why we have to deal with such cases. Actually, in this case, I uh, did a bypassing of the uh, silver point due to I found there is a, an epical uh, curvature in the paco-lingual direction. That's why I uh, choose the uh, bypassing of the root canal system. As we see, this is the uh, compute CT. There is an abrupt curvature in the paco-lingual direction. And also in such cases, it is very important to analyze the case before starting. Why the file was broken or why the silver point was broken or even why the anusment was broken before I start. Because if you know the exact cause of separation of this broken instrument, you can manage it successfully. Now I try to bypass the broken instrument. And I try to bypass, sorry, the silver point. And this is after bypassing the silver point. And now this is after cleaning and shaving and uh, a master cone step follow duration of the root canal system. Uh, also in this case, I want to uh, discuss a very important sign and very important thing. Uh, actually, uh, many dentists may, uh, may say that the radix root is short, but actually there is two uh, lines here, the, law, the uh, outside line and the inside line. If you concentrate on the inside line, you will find that the uh, exact extent of the root is in the inside line, not the outside one. And this is uh, very important because many dents may uh, interfere with such sign uh, of uh, over uh, felling these roots. Okay, and I spent more than 160 uh, files. And actually when I uh, come to make a capture of these files, they uh, drop on the floor as you see. So that's why I uh, take it natural and uh, uh, leave it as it is to make a capture. Okay, so this is regarding the variations in uh, number of roots. What about the variations in number of root canals? 
we have multiple variations, multiple examples for variations. But here I will take only two examples for variations in number of crocodiles. The first one, which is, I, in my opinion, one of the most uh, important for the clinician, which is a, a mesopacal two or second uh, mesopacal canal in the maxillary first molars. Um, I, uh, I had the honor with uh, my colleagues, uh, George Martin and his team to work uh, on the uh, prevalence of the MB2 regarding the prevalence of MB2, worldwide prevalence of MB2 in the maxillary first uh, molar. And we found a very interesting uh, finding, which is uh, we have uh, demographic variations and we have uh, age variations and also we have a sex variations. What are we found with uh, this in, in wonderful team? We found there's a variations in uh, prevalence of MB2, multiple variations, uh, for example, 90, 97%, uh, 95%, and actually we can see also 50%. So there is a great variations according to the demography and the race of the uh, individuals. That's why we found also males and younger patients presented with a higher MB2 proportions when compared with females and older patients. It was a very interesting finding, but actually I learned it from this project that you have to search on MB2 as it is a normal canal, not an extra canal, not a uh, may, may, may be present or not present. That's why we found that the uh, global prevalence of MB2 about 73.8%. That's why if you have 10 cases with uh, uh, 10 uh, cases with root canal treatment, maxillary first molars with root canal treatment, you can see MB2 in about seven to eight cases of them. So it is not an extra canal, but it is now it is one of the main canals of the maxillary first molars. This is the first example. The second example is uh, second lingual canal in mandibular first premolars and mandibular second premolars. And also I have the honor to share with the same team uh, and I published it in uh, Journal Fantastics with uh, Dr. George Martin. Uh, we found also there is a great variation in the prevalence of the uh, lingual canal in the mandibular first premolar, mandibular second premolar. And these variations reflected that we have to search for extra canals. This here we can say extra canals because here is the, the percentage is uh, much lower than the prevalence in uh, MB2. Uh, we can see the uh, uh, about in Egypt 32.7, uh, which was the highest prevalence in the mandibular first molar lingual canal. So we have a variations in root canal, number of root canals, and we have variations in number of roots. And now also we have a variations in canal geometry, which is the most important one. Actually, this is because the day use uh, found that 27.4% of the teeth have some sort of furcation, especially at the apical region. So there is a splatting at the apical third of the root canal. And in other studies, they found that 70% of the cases had apical furcation of the main canal. So there is a very important point to be discussed here. There is a clinical significance of discussing the apical furcation at the apical third of the root canal. Because if you don't have a perfect cleaning and shaping of this furcation, if you don't have a perfect sealing of this furcation, now we are in a big problem because we have a failed root canal treatment. As we see, uh, one of my colleagues from Brazil, um, they did a study uh, on uh, micro CT, uh, as we see, here's uh, different variations at the apical third of the root canals. We found type one, type two, virtue C, type three, and type four. And we have another uh, type C in the next uh, slide here. We have a uh, uh, compli complicated apical delta system. So we need to imagine together how we can deal with such compli complications. Is it possible to deal with such complication using or such uh, uh, anastomosis or such Epical delta system using the traditional ways of instrumentation for sure. No, we we need a, an innovative 
techniques and, and, and innovative ideas to manage such cases. And this is another view. As we see, there is a huge number of the apical ramifications at the apical side of the organs. This is uh, documented and this is revealed that we have a big challenge in dealing with apical sealing of the root canal system. So from this, uh, or from these previous uh, pictures or uh, micro CT uh, scans, we found that it is impossible to mechanically access these verifications. So the deal with the cleaning or the irrigation protocol of such ramifications. That's why this introduction to uh, reveal to all attendees that you have to make a knowledge regarding the inner anatomical shape of the root canal system. If you don't know the exact anatomy of the root canal system, you cannot perform successful root canal treatment from the start. After finishing the canal anatomy uh, factor, we need to go to the instrumentation technique factor. The first question is which epical limit to perform a perfect instrumentation, especially in cases with epical deltas, as we see before. The literature found that the best or the most successful root canal treatment is that, whereas the instrumentation and obturation should not exceed the root canal space. So my advice to all followers, don't hesitate to be confined within the root canal system. If you are exaggerated to perform a perfect epical, uh, uh, epical cleaning, sometimes you may uh, perform what's called uh, epical perforation, which is very important. Because when you perform an epical perforation, to uh, this is a, 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 a very critical step because you need to perform a good epical uh, perforation. But actually, we did uh, epic an epical perforation due to improper uh, maintaining the working glass. That's why better success rate when the obturation was confined to the root canal space. The literature found that when you did over an instrumentation during root canal instrumentation, there is a possibility of damaging of the preepical tissues. So, what's the next step? The next step is preepical irritation, preepical inflammation. This is followed by epical periodontitis, and sometimes you may be superimposed with a preepical infection. So, what is the, the uh, guideline regarding the working lens? The guideline still is one to four to two millimeter from the radiographic apex. But actually, there is a debate regarding this issue because uh, some literature took about 0.5% from the radiographic apex, and other took about one millimeter from the radiographic apex, and third took about uh, two millimeter from the radiographic apex, apex in case of uh, apical region and something like this. Let's talk. Uh, to uh, and see this case. This is a case for retreatment. Uh, let's analyze this case. Uh, there is a lack of the coronal seal due to improper uh, restoration, coronal restoration and fractured uh, coronal restoration. And also there is no apical seal. Uh, sometimes you may perform root canal treatment like this and you be uh, satisfactory with this, with, uh, this result. But actually, let's go to see what we can obtain if we uh, can concentrate on dealing with epical delta system. This is the case after I remove the gutta percha from inside the root canal system. And in such cases, when I have a, a larger core of gutta percha, I use the rotary instrumentation for removal of the gutta percha. And I can also use a, a pen, a, a heated pen, to remove the uh, gutta percha from inside the root canal. After I removed the gutta percha, I uh, did uh, cleaning and shaving the root canal system, and I did obturation of the root canal system, as we see in this. Please note the apical third and the presence of the apical delta at the apical third of the root canal. This reveals the importance of 
perfect cleaning of the root canal system. It is not the issue of instrumentation alone. It is not the issue of creating a very large and very tapered root canal, uh, uh, root canal preparation, but actually it is not the issue of very large preparation, very tapered preparation, over tapered preparation, no. The issue is you have to deal with the root canal as a root canal system, not as a one, two, or three root canals. So, which apical diameter size I need is a very debatable issue in the literature. Actually, the apical third of the root canals is a, 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 a very um, headache issue. Why? Because some sort of uh, uh, some researcher took about preserving the apical pyramid in its initial possession with the narrowest diameter, so not to increase the apical diameter than 25 uh, uh, size 25 file. And others took about size 25 file is not satisfactory to perform a, a, a larger apical preparation because larger apical preparation means higher efficacy of the irrigating solution and it will reduce the bacterial growth at the apical level. So what's the solution? We have two schools. The first school talking about very minimal preparation at the, epic, at the apex, while the other school talking about larger preparation to obtain a uh, better solution. The first school took, is talking about uh, the efficacy of uh, cleaning, especially the uh, activation methods of the root canal system, while the second school took about the oldest goal and instrumentation should be at least 35 or uh, 40 size uh, uh, of the file. That's why we have to know that. The first option or the first school and the second school, both of them are right. But actually, you have to select the case. Which case is, uh, which technique is available or, or suitable for this case? That's why in such cases, when uh, your initial file is size eight file, it is very, sufficient to uh, do an epical preparation up to size 25 file. While in other cases, if you have initial file size 25, so it is not sufficient to perform epical size to size 30, but you have to enlarge the epical size. All of them, all, all of these schools should be uh, supported by the concept of cleaning of the root canal system. Both of them, are right, but actually without cleaning of the root canal system, there is no rule of them. That's why we have to know that the microorganisms colonize to the dentinal tubules into a depth of 200 to 300 micron. So even you enlarge the, the root canal to an epical diameter size 80, we still have a deeper penetration of the microorganisms more than you removed from the dental, from the root canal, uh, you removed the dental chips from the root canal. So we have a big challenge. Is instrumentation is sufficient alone? The answer is no. Even the epical enlargement remains controversial until today but actually, we have to know that without perfect instrumentation, you cannot obtain perfect seeing the root canal system. And also, without activation of the irrigating solution, we cannot obtain perfect sealing of the apical dentist. More or less, nowadays, we have a multiple generations of the root canal instruments and root canal files. But actually, the literature found that the CMY instruments come on the top of these instruments. Why? Because a controlled memory files reduce the controlled memory files reduce the incidence of the preparation errors, and there is a possibility to maintain the original canal geometry. So, when you maintain the original canal geometry, just you 
enlarge, not shave. So the terminology shaving and cleaning, in my opinion, is not a good terminology. The uh, better terminology is to say instrumentation and cleaning or cleaning and instrumentation of the root canal system. Why? Because we don't give a shape to the root canal, but just we enlarge the original shape of the root canal, not more. So using a match tapered gutta percha cones should uh, show it minor micro leakage. And this is at one of the key to success for uh, root canal treatment. Why? Because uh, many dentists perform uh, a perfect instrumentation and they need to enlarge the root canals and they need to uh, uh, make more taper of the root canals. But actually, when they start to obturate the root canals, they use a single cone technique. In my opinion, actually, I hate single cone technique. And I think many on the dentist don't prefer single cone technique. Why I, don't, I hate single cone technique? Because I, uh, I have a, a thought and I believe that single cone technique, we have a multiple vibes, even with the sealer, even with bi-ceramic sealers, still we have a uh, multiple vibes inside the root canal. Why? Because as we will see, the sealer has a limited penetration inside the root canal. Let's go to see this case. There is a case of uh, retreatment after I removed the gutta the, uh, uh, there is a apical, uh, apical periodontitis related to the distal, distal buccal root, and also there is winding of the periodontal lingam space related to the mesial root, but it's not the problem. The, the, the exact problem is there is a, a no geometry of the canal, no canal outline. So the main challenge in such cases is to create, not to create, but actually to, uh, uh, um, to discover the glide path to the full working lens to reach to the apical construction or natural construction. After I reached it to the full working lens, I did um, apical uh, preparation and followed by a taper preparation. And I, after I finished the instrumentation of the root canal system, I did cleaning of the root canal system. And now this is the master cone radiograph. Please note that in this master cone radiograph, it was not found in the uh, preoperative radiograph, but see here's in the master radiograph, there is some sort of epical resorption. If you don't have uh, the, um, the ways to manage such cases, you will see failure of the root canal treatment. In such cases, we have to manage in a different way. How come, please note, see, first we have to enlarge the apical uh, size of the root canal to a suitable size. And in some cases, I uh, do an MTA apical plug to perform an apical seal of the root canal system. And usually, usually I use a biceramic or even MTA sealer to uh, try to manage uh, such uh, empty space at the epical third of the root canal. Let's move to the irrigation protocol. We talk about it, but let's go to know uh, regarding the smear layer of the root canal system. Sorry. Regarding the irrigation protocol, we talk about instrumentation is uh, alone is not sufficient or is not enough to perform uh, or to obtain successful root canal treatment. But uh, cleaning of the root canal system is much or paramount in importance uh, than instrumentation of the root canal system. Why? Because we have what's called the smear layer. The smear layer uh, usually is of two layers, the inorganic layer and the organic layer. When we need to manage the organic layer of the smear layer, you can use the sodium full concentration sodium hypochlorite irrigating solution. And when you need to manage the inorganic component of the smear layer, you have to deal with it using a chelating agents such as EDTA or ethylenediamine tetraacetic acid. Okay. Is smear layer helpful in sealing of the root canal system or not? Regarding this issue, it is very debatable, but actually most of the publications talking about a smear layer must be removed to obtain 
a, a patent dentinal tubules. Such patent dentinal tubules is very important to create resin tags on the concept of monoplugs that, that we will talk about, uh, about it uh, in the uh, future of this uh, lecture. So, the canal and its vocations must be effectively filled after decalcifying solutions such as EDTA. So you have to use EDTA and you have to use full concentration sodium hypochlorite to obtain removal of the smear layer. After that, you have to deal with the root canal system or the complex root canal system with activation. Activation of the irrigating solution is very important because activation of the irrigating solution remove or flushing away the rubbish from inside the root canal system. When I, when I talk about root canal system, as I told you before, I talk about, about anastomosis, I talk about irrigation, I talk about things, I talk about epical delta system. And now, after we know the canal anatomy and we did an instrumentation technique using CM wire technology, and after we did an irrigating solution using full concentration sodium hypochlorite to remove the organic component of the smear layer and, and EDTA solution to remove the inorganic component of the smear layer, we are going to use uh, the uh, a different methods to uh, activate the irrigating solution to remove the rubbish from inside the root canal system. Now, after dryness of the root canal system, we need to use a sealer. Which type of sealer we need? Actually, when we talk about sealers, we have to know the physical, chemical, and biological properties of the sealer. In the past, we talked about zincocytogenol sealer as a master. We, you, we all used zincocytogenol for many years ago as a master because of a perfect uh, initial uh, sealability and something like this. But actually, in the literature, we found that there is a greater solubility of the zincocytogenol at time. That's why there is a need for improving or creating or uh, use an, an innovative sealer than the uh, zincocytogenol. Among the sealers that uh, was used and nowadays still they are using is the resin sealer. And we have a multiple modifications for starting with uh, second generation, third generation. And nowadays, the meta-acrylate based sealers, a fourth generation, uh, are available in the market. Uh, there is no conditioning that you need like before. There is no uh, acid etching or etching of the root canal system like before. That's why using the adhesive, the adhesive uh, sealer inside the root canal system is very powerful to obtain a perfect seal of the apical third of the root canal, especially with improving, improving the physical, chemical, and biological properties of this resin sealer. And also we have MTA and biceramic sealers, even with uh, some, there is, uh, uh, some disadvantages regarding using an MTA and biceramic sealers in the market, uh, like they found that the solubility of the biceramic sealers is much higher than the uh, resin sealer, but still there is on the clinical base, there is no significant difference, but actually there is a, in the literature, there is a difference. More or less, uh, also there's a multiple debate regarding the uh, use of the biceramic sealer in dry canal and using biceramic sealer uh, uh, in the field uh, that there is a blood or exudate or something like this. And Dr. Kamrili took about uh, all of these situations in multiple literatures, very uh, uh, strong and powerful literatures. I recommend all of my colleagues to uh, read them. So there is an inverse relation between the micro leakage and the tubular penetration of the canal sealers. The deeper penetration of the sealer is the higher ability of the sealer to engage root canal dentine 
and the least micro leakages. Okay. We have also multiple factors that may affect the uh, may affect sealing of the root canal system regarding using of the sealer, such as the uh, uh, surface activity of the sealer, such as the contact angle between the sealer and the retinal tubules, such as the obturation technique used. Okay. Um, actually, they found that in the literature, the sealer, uh, the uh, most uh, penetrable uh, sealer inside the root canals is 60 micrometer. So when we talk about the uh, bacteria in uh, uh, previous uh, slides, we talk about that bacteria uh, can colonize and, uh, and bacteria is able to penetrate inside the entire tubules up to 200 to 300 microns. And here is the maximum penetration of the sealer is six, 60 uh, micrometer. So you have to imagine at least we have 140 empty space with uh, embedded with the bacteria. That's why when we're talking about complete sealing of the root canal system, it is impossible to obtain complete sealing of the root canal system. But actually, we have what's called better cleaning of the canal system using activation of the irrigating solution. And you can use uh, um, uh, ethyl alcohol to try to dry the root canal system. Following that, you can use an MTA or biceramic sealer for deeper penetration and chemical uh, uh, bonding to the dentinal tubules to obtain sealing of the root canal system. This is a case, as we see, uh, sealer inside the root canals. Now, after uh, we removed the uh, sealer from the root canals, it was uh, a sealer material with a uh, flow gutta portion, by the way. And this is after I obtained an apical seal and I obtained preparation of the root canal uh, system. So, what is the paste sealer? This is the, uh, our deal as a researcher to find the paste through canal system. To answer this question, I have to say there is no what's called paste through canal sealer, but we need more investigations uh, on the sealers available in the market. But my recommendation to all of them uh, is to use uh, a resin sealer or you can use an MTA sealer is quite good. Regarding using the biceramic sealer, there is a debate regarding using the biceramic sealer with warm vertical compaction technique. But recently, the uh, companies uh, produced uh, a sealer with a high flow sealer uh, that's, um, that you can use it with a higher uh, temperature, more than 150. But actually, we have the concept of monoblock, which is uh, based on the uh, concept of adhesive density. You can use a methyl mesoacrylate uh, based sealer. And actually, you have to know the effect of moisture. And you have to know that you, can, you are not able to complete dry the root canal system. And you are uh, not able to uh, sufficient to dry to the, the apical extent of the root canal. And also there is a contamination of the root canal dentine. All of these factors may endanger sealing of the root canal system. So to perform perfect sealing of the root canal system, you have to manage such challenges. How I can manage such challenges? I can manage it using conditioning of the root canal system, as I told you before, using uh, uh, EDTA, and also you can dry the root canal system using an ethyl alcohol to obtain a perfect seal or to obtain satisfactory seal of the root canal system. Now, when we talk about the thickness of the sealer, the apical, uh, in the apical one third, they found that the, uh, the thickness of the sealer bound 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter. So when uh, we talk about a single cone technique with this sealer, we need to 
uh, maximize this thickness. So we, we need much thicker sealer than when you use lateral compaction or even when you use warm vertical compaction technique. So the rule is when you enlarge or maximize the thickness of the sealer, there is a greater possibility of failure due to solubility of the sealer in the future because it is not the core of your ranking material, but just it, it, you can use it for sealing of the root canal system. And finally, we will talk about post space preparation. We have multiple issues regarding post space preparation. The first issue is the obturation technique used. Actually, the obturation technique, I talk about the obturation technique uh, that a warm vertical compaction technique is better than lateral compaction technique. Even the lateral compaction technique, we, uh, we have used uh, it for uh, many years ago, but nowadays we are using a warm vertical compaction technique as the standard for uh, um, root canal obturation to perform or to overcome the definite gaps and voids that we uh, saw in lateral compaction uh, obturation. Actually, warm vertical compaction technique has homogeneous uh, mass of gutta percha with reduced voice and increased adaptation. The temperature with continuous wave technique may accelerate the setting time of the sealer. And this is a very critical issue regarding using the warm vertical compaction technique with biceramic sealer due to premature setting of the sealer. And the recent publications talk about we don't need to uh, completely dry the root canal system when using a bioceramic sealer to avoid premature setting of this sealer. And actually, when using a thermophil obturation, for example, we have least voids uh, and gaps as uh, found in the publication. And also, uh, also alpha phase get to Persia, uh, a plastic core carrier. But, uh, we also, we found there is a more dense and well adapted epical uh, uh, filling. So, the least is single cone, followed by lateral compaction technique, while the paste is to use heat data percha techniques. Regarding, you will use a warm vertical compaction technique or solid core carry insertion technique. Actually, when we talk about post space operation, which is the paste technique, and there is an important question immediate versus delayed post space preparation. As a clinician, I need to perform or I need to uh, uh, do uh, post and core in the same visit of obturation. Is it available to me as a clinician or not? After I uh, uh, talk about the technique of obturation, we have to correlate between the technique of obturation and the post space preparation in the same visit. For single cone technique and lateral compaction technique, it is very, very difficult to uh, perform immediate post space preparation in the same visit. Why? Because when you uh, perform a removal of the gutta percha using the uh, drill of the post, you will disturb the apical seal at the same time. But when using a heat uh, gutta to per heated get to pressure such as warm vertical compaction technique you when you use the drill you can use it in the same visit to summarize this point you can use immediate post space preparation for warm vertical compaction technique it is possible but it is very difficult to use with single cone technique or lateral compaction technique uh, or cold get a pressure techniques okay Now, to obtain or to maintain the apical seal after post space preparation, what's the paste length to leave of the tuberture inside the root canal system? The answer of this question is you have to leave from three to five millimeter of the remaining filling material to, uh, to obtain apical seal. This is the main uh, guidelines of the literature. But actually, uh, the literature found that when you have less than six millimeter of the filling material, 
there is a possibility of leakage. So the best is to leave at least six millimeter of the filling material at the apical cell, and then you can perform uh, uh, post space preparation and you can uh, perform uh, post and cool in the same visit immediately after obturation, not properly. As we see in this case, we did and we left, uh, we did root canal treatment and we left uh, about six millimeter or uh, more of the apical seal to obtain apical seal of the root canal and don't disturb the sealing after post space preparation and post insertion and post placement inside the root canals. But actually, the literature also found that if you reduced the apical um, three millimeter, or if you reduce the apical seal or the apical filling, then three millimeter to obtain a longer post, it is very dangerous because you will affect the quality of the apical seal. And if you affected the quality of the apical seal, you will have failure of the canal treatment. You will have failure of the canal treatment. You did a perfect post. You, we, you did a perfect core and you did a perfect crown, but actually you have a failed root canal treatment because you reduced the uh, safety limit than three millimeter of apical seal. What about coronal seal? Is it important as apical seal? Actually, it is very important as apical seal because as we took in the uh, previous uh, slides, in the first slide, I took about sealing of the root canal system. And when I define apical seal, I define sealing of the root canal system, which is total obliteration of the root canal system, which is obtaining a fluid tight seal and hermetic seal of the root canal system. So if you have a case with perfect root canal treatment, but you don't have a coronal seal of this perfect root canal treatment, you will see there is a failure, the, or even there is a possibility of failure of the root canal treatment due to lack of coronal seal, as there is a, a, an open margin from a crown, as is, there is a defective uh, coronal restoration, all of them can lead to lack of the coronal seal with failure of the root canal treatment. So from now, we have to learn, or from this lecture, we need to learn the following, and we need to uh, take a home message to uh, uh, our uh, practice in the future, which is perfect sealing of the root canal system starting from the starting from perfect cleaning and perfect instrumentation of the root canal system. Dryness of the root canal system is mandatory to obtain apical sealing and to obtain sealing, perfect sealing of the root canal system. If you want to perform post space preparation in the same visit of obturation, you have to use warm vertical compaction technique. In short, no sealer or obturation material is capable of completely preventing leakage. So micro leakage will happen even with the paste technique in the market, but still we are working as a researcher on how we can minimize the micro leakage with different techniques and different materials. And we, and we try to improve these materials and we try to create an innovative materials in the future to overcome such leakage. Finally, I would like to extend my thanks to Professor Hussein Hwezi uh, for this invitation to, and to Iraq Indontic Society. And I hope it was very professional, uh, beneficial to all of my colleagues. Thank you very much, Professor Hussein, and see you, inshallah, very soon. Thank you very much, Doctor. And uh, we really appreciate uh, your lecture and uh, you really uh, highlighted uh, many uh, problems that we have got in, uh, in the dentics uh, relating to the apical seal. Because, you know, nowadays we've got many materials uh, and techniques that can assist us to make an apical seal. And uh, <clears throat> at the same time, uh, in the future, make a good healing. Um,
And, and, and I'm going to ask a couple of questions that were uh, asked by one of our, my colleagues. Uh, you stated in one of your uh, uh, um, cases is that uh, one of the uh, root canals, uh, the obturation was short, when really it was not. Really, uh, nowadays we rely uh, uh, on EPICS locators. That's why uh, you may not uh, see the the working length coinciding uh, between the EPICS locator and the X-ray. So, do you really? consider EPIX locators a must in uh, root and working length estimation? Uh, for sure, Professor Hussain, um, it is very important, the point uh, to be discussed. Uh, actually, the electronic EPIX locator is mandatory nowadays in the endontic field because um, we have to correlate between the results from the electronic EPIX locator and also from the uh, radiograph. Uh, usually, I don't uh, perform a working lens radiograph in my cases, but uh, in such cases, when I'm, uh, there is a debate regarding uh, this very short uh, lens or this very long lens, I, I am going all to confirm this finding or this uh, 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 location of the apex using electronic apex locator with the radiograph. That's why. Uh, I, come, I, I, I uh, belong my voice to your voice. Uh, we have to use an electronic apex locator uh, during working lens determination in all of our cases because uh, it is mandatory to use it in the literature. And uh, one of the tips that I found in the literature regarding electronic using of the electronic apex locator uh, in the literature, they uh, do uh, uh, working lens up to the first red uh, chart, not to the uh, last green chart. To be confirmed that you uh, bypass the apex and this is the real, this is the real reading, not the virtual reading as the uh, green one. Uh, so I uh, bypass to the first red one and reduce 0.5 to one millimeter from that lens. This is the last uh, uh, or the recent uh, way to uh, read with the electronic apex locator that I found in the literature. Okay, uh, you stated that uh, uh, you uh, try as much as possible not to go uh, more uh, as an in irrigation uh, more than uh, uh, two millimeters from the working length. Uh, does that mean that you rely entirely on uh, irrigation in this region and which type of irrigant uh, agitation, whether sonic or ultrasonic or hips? Uh, okay, just uh, to, to confirm my, uh, uh, my information regarding this uh, point, um, my opinion regarding this point, uh, actually I, I said uh, I reached to the full working lens, uh, but actually I don't enlarge the uh, apical preparation uh, more than 25 if I started with size 85. But if I have already uh, apical size, initial apical size, size 25, and in such cases, I enlarge the apical preparation up to size 35 or size uh, 40 to the full working lens. But regarding the uh, 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 cleaning of the apical delta system, usually I use uh, uh, full concentration sodium hypochlorite, and I agitate the uh, irrigating solution inside the root canal using uh, passive ultrasonic irrigation and manual dynamic acti activation. Uh, both of them I use in, uh, in the case. But actually, or most commonly I use, or I depend on manual, uh, on uh, uh, passive ultrasonic irrigation. And uh, usually uh, I use the irrigating solution or the activation for about uh, one and a half uh, minutes because uh, after one and a half minutes, uh, there is no more uh, rubbish from inside the root canal, so there is no need to endanger the uh, uh, root canal preparation with the uh, ultrasonics. 
Uh, I just, uh, as a comment, uh, you stated that the sealer might uh, enter the, around about uh, 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 maybe 200 microns uh, inside the dentinal tubules. Uh, uh, one of my MS, uh, sorry, PhD students, Dr. Rafid, he performed uh, a way of uh, attracting uh, antibacterial uh, agents in the uh, uh, in the root canal, uh, and uh, he got a, a scanning electron microscope uh, uh, pictures uh, that uh, made uh, nanoparticles uh, uh, penetrating from two hundred and fifty to seven hundred and fifty. So really, that's why I'm saying that uh, uh, nowadays we've got certain materials and techniques to assist us. So uh, bacteria uh, sitting down in the dentinal tubule away from our uh, irrigation now is not really uh, safe because we can send to it antibacterial agents that can penetrate the dentinal tubules. That's why uh, research is underway in such uh, drug delivery systems. Uh, uh, finally, I am uh, very, 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 very oh, sorry, uh, sorry, if you- Very interesting uh, results. Yes, it is a very interesting result. And I'm uh, um, impressed to use uh, this irrigating solution. I need uh, to, to make a sample from uh, it. Uh, very interesting and uh, I will try to use it. I'm going to talk about this in the uh, uh, IFIA uh, meeting that's going to be in uh, next August, uh, and uh, it will be in my in my lecture, uh, the procedure and everything. Uh, it's quite an interesting uh, uh, result, really. Inshallah, best of luck. Inshallah, thank you very much. Well, uh, at the end of our lecture, uh, we are very, very grateful to our very dear friend, Dr. Professor Mateza Khawas, uh, who, who uh, uh, he uh, took part of his time to give it to us and, uh, and uh, his expertise. And uh, we really want and uh, hope to see him in Iraq later uh, in the future when uh, we... Uh, uh, when things, uh, the, the uh, COVID-19 subsides. And uh, uh, in the meantime, we're uh, only uh, seeing each other through our, uh, the, the webinars. So as a token of uh, uh, gratitude from the society, a certificate of participation is going to be sent to you uh, directly and will be posted mm -hmm. in the uh, the, um, the page of the association and society. Thank you Thank very you. much. Nice to meet you. It's my pleasure and honor, uh, Professor Hassim. See you in the future, inshallah. Hope to see you in Iraq or in Egypt, inshallah. Thank you very much. You At very much. the end, I want to thank everyone who uh, attended this uh, lecture and uh, I hope to see you in the future uh, uh, webinars. Uh, uh, every uh, Friday um, um, in the future. And thank you very much. Shukran jazeean, Doctor. Shukran jazeean.